So I'm trying out a new app here. Let's see how it works. We have a reaction in which potassium chlorate, KClO3, is decomposing to make KCl and oxygen gas. Now we're trying to uh, start by just predicting the sign, if we could, without using the table of delta S, delta H, or delta G. And when I look at this reaction, I know that the delta S of a reaction is sometimes easy to predict by looking at the states. So we're starting with only a solid, and we're converting it to a solid plus gas. And we know that the delta S of a, shouldn't say delta S, we should just say the S, so let me get rid of the delta. We know that the S of a gas is much, much greater than the S of solids. So when a reaction is producing a gas, the delta S for the reaction will be very positive. Okay, so we can predict that. Now, looking at a reaction and trying to decide whether it's endothermic or exothermic, which is what delta H is, is hard to predict. There are some things that we can know. Combustion reactions are exothermic. So I might have guessed, well, combustion is a reaction with oxygen, and if I am producing oxygen, maybe it would be endothermic. If reacting with oxygen is exothermic, that's going in, you know, thinking about them in both directions. But that's really not a combustion reaction. It's not burning to in the standard sense. So I will not endeavor to predict the sign of the other two, but I certainly can predict the sign of delta S. Now let's see what's next. Hmm. That's weird. I cannot get it to advance. There it goes. Okay. So now we're not going to predict, but we're going to use the tables to actually calculate the delta S, and let's see how positive it indeed is. So the delta S of the reaction, we know, would be the, and this is the standard delta S, because these are tables of standard S's, we know it would be the S of uh, KCl, times 2, since there's a 2 coefficient, plus 3 times the S of O2, minus, this is the products minus the reactants, 2 times the S of KClO3. So we plug in our values, and we have, now that 2, what does that 2 stand for? It really stands for 2 moles. We have 2 moles of KCl times the value of S for KCl, which is 82.6, and the units are joules per mole Kelvin. This allows the moles to cancel, and we'll be left with joules per Kelvin, plus 3 moles times the value for O2. It's not zero. Oxygen has got entropy, so it's 205.2 joules per mole Kelvin and the moles cancel, minus two moles times the S of KClO3, 143.1 joules per mole Kelvin. Kelvin's cancel, I mean the moles cancel. So that will leave us a delta S for the reaction equal to 494.6 joules per Kelvin. So that's a pretty big entropy change. As entropy change goes, it is definitely positive as we produce three moles of gas in the reaction. Now let's do the same thing, but let's do it for delta S instead. So the, de I mean delta H instead. So the delta H standard for the reaction would be products minus reactants in a similar fashion. So we have two moles of KCl times the Delta H of KCl, which is negative 436.5 kilojoules per mole. That's the one reactant, I mean product. We have three times zero because oxygen is zero, so I'm not going to even write that down. 
that's the products, minus 2 moles times the delta H of KClO3, which is right there. So it's a negative 397.7 kilojoules per mole. And that will give me a delta H value equal to a negative 77.6 kilojoules. So this decomposition reaction, the breaking apart of KClO3 into KCl plus O2, that's a decomposition, is actually an exothermic decomposition. Now the next part of this problem is actually to calculate the delta um, delta G of the reaction. Now we've got a couple ways that we could do this. We could calculate the standard delta G by using the standard delta H minus T times the standard delta S, which we've already calculated. And by doing it this way, we have a delta H value that we've already calculated, which was a negative 77.6 kilojoules minus the temperature, which it tells me was at 298 or 25 degrees Celsius, 298K, times the delta S, which we just calculated, of 494.6. But what's your units? This is in joules per Kelvin. Now we can't subtract this until it's also in kilojoules. So we will convert onto kilojoules. A thousand joules is a kilojoule. And that will give me a delta G of a negative 225. And we'll have units of kilojoules. So that would be the delta G, and that would be one way to calculate the delta G of the reaction. It's not the only way we could do it. We could also use a similar equation that we did up here with delta H, products minus reactants. We could use those values there. Now, is this reaction spontaneous at 25 degrees Celsius? Is it spontaneous? at 298K, which is the same as 25 degrees Celsius. Well, with a negative um, value for our delta G, we know that it would be spontaneous, okay? So it's spontaneous, and that would be spontaneous in the forward direction, making um, the oxygen in the KCl. Well, what effect would a change in temperature have on the spontaneity of the reaction? Well, here's what we know. When delta H is negative, when delta H is negative and delta S is positive, which is what we have here, if you take a negative number and subtract from it, it will always be negative. What do I mean by it? That means delta G is always less than zero at all temperatures. So it doesn't matter what temperature this reaction runs at, it will be spontaneous. And you could just go up here and, you know, keep the number here the same and number here the same if you need to prove it to yourself. Change that temperature. Change it all over the place and you'll always see that you're going to have a negative value. Sometimes it's worth doing that just so that you can really get a good feel of what's going on with the equation and the signs. Now, what would be the other way that we could calculate delta G just so that we've got it in our notes here? Delta G, we can get standard delta G by using that summation formula. So it would be 2 times the number of moles, 2 moles, I mean, times the um, delta G of the products, which was KCl. That was a negative 408.5. You can um, look back up here. 408.5, and then the zero, which I'm not going to write, minus two moles, I should write kilojoules per mole there, two moles times the delta G of KClO3, which was a negative 296.3 kilojoules per mole. Now this doesn't give you exactly the same number as we saw up there. Um, it's actually equal to a negative 224.4 kilojoules, but it's very, very close to the same value. It is actually within um, 
0.3% of the other values. So those are very, very close regardless of how you calculate it.